Right, welcome everyone. In the beginning, name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, you want to speak, so we're going to speak with you. Come, divine will, come speak in our speaking. Listen in our listening. Beat in our heartbeats. Breathe in our breathing. Flow in our blood. And we call in our memories. Jesus, we give you the little pebble of our will in exchange for the gift of living in your most holy and divine will. We fuse ourselves into your will, Lord Jesus. Fusing into your will every act of this day. We abandon ourselves to your will, Lord Jesus. And we make an act of resignation to your will. As part of this short prayer time, everybody, I'd like you to just, I'm going to lead you in a deeper act of abandonment. I would like you to imagine any attachment that you have, particularly if it's an obsession of any sort, something that's really got you. Just imagine it as a piece of string attached to a balloon. So take a moment to think of an attachment, something that you, something that's really got you, or person, a job, a possession, whatever. And you're holding this piece of string. And what I'm going to invite you to do is just say in your heart, Heavenly Father, I abandon this to you. It might take a few times to pray it because these can be very deep attachments. Even if it's only a thread, it can be it can have a powerful hold on us. So we abandon any obsessions, any attachments to you, Heavenly Father, in the divine will. In your will, we make an act of abandonment of anything that is an obsession. And we let go of the string. We let go of the string into your will, Lord. Into your will, Father. Dearest Mother and our patron saints, we ask you to give us the grace to let go of anything preventing us growing in the divine will. Give us the grace to let go and the wisdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Right, my beautiful little, um, what do they call it? Um, oh, there's a Hebrew word. I can't remember what it's called now. A Hebrew word for a small gathering. Ah, never mind. Um, welcome to tonight's session. So tonight, we're going to be, I'm going to be teaching on the topic of light. And we'll have a few scriptures which are familiar to you. And we're going to look at how in the divine will, we can form light. Um, and the importance of forming that light. So, we begin with John 1, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. And says this so 
verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. Okay, it's John 1, 9. The true light who enlightens every man was coming into the world. And this is what Cardinal Journey wrote about this scripture in, the theology, in a book called The Theology of the Church. From the day of his incarnation, all the graces of light flowing from Christ's divinity are gathered in his intelligence before being poured out on all men in order to enlighten and illumine them. As long as this world continues, the interior illuminations will not abandon the preaching of the gospel, the exterior announcing of the good news. So when the word of God is proclaimed, it infuses a light into the soul. It enlightens the soul. It makes the soul light. And that light is from God himself. Jesus is the one who is enlightening us all the time. So when you hear these teachings on the divine will, or the gospel being proclaimed, or you're meditating upon the gospel, every time God's light is pouring in. God is revealing new things to you. So just bear that in mind. So think that you're constantly growing in his will, walking in the light as he teaches you. This is Psalm 119, verse 105. You probably know this one well. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and of an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. So, when you hear teachings on the divine will and on the interior life, and in fact, you know, the word of God itself, that word gives us a light in our soul to guide our feet and to light up the path before us. So, you do not see a path in front of you, as it were. You do not see your feet being lit up by a light. But what you have is the Word of God, or God's Word revealed in the church, which is light, showing you the way, okay? The word itself shows you the way. So the word in this circumstance is being compared to a lamp that's on my feet and a light that's on the path in front of me. The word of God is being compared to that. Now, when the Catholic Church talks about the word of God, it is not sola scriptura. That's a Protestant error. Okay? When we talk about the Word of God, we talk about sacred scripture, magisterial teachings, and tradition. And in this case, Louisa's writings are flowing from tradition, private revelation. Fatima flows from tradition. 
The divine mercy flows from tradition. Medjugorje, even though it's not yet approved. Okay. Um, Luis's writings have been approved and accepted by the church. Okay, bear that in mind. They've been accepted and the church is publishing them. So bear that in mind. Um, so th this word, so the word of God, in this case the word of God as revealed through Luisa's private revelations, provides us with a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. So it is the word which is light, which guides the pathway. So it shows us the way to walk and tells us what is on that path. Okay, The word itself. So you have to get that in mind. The word itself is a light. So normally, let's say for argument's sake, um, you're going, you're, you're driving from um, where you are down to a destination, Cornwall or something like that. You got your sat nav on. Your sat nav says, at the junction, turn right. At the next junction, turn left, and so on and so forth. Take the M6, take the M1, whatever. In that case, it is the sat-nav which is guiding you to your destination. Well, here we have the Word of God, both sacred scripture and the writings of Louisa, which is teaching us, guiding us to the possession of the divine will. Okay, So the Word that God speaks through these writings is our light that's guiding us on our path. And the path that it's guiding us on, we are utterly blind to. 